Dr. Malescu. Today's sequence is a beginner intermediate level Pilates. Um, most of the sequencing that we are doing and all the exercises are gentle and beginner with a few core exercises that are more challenging for those of you who want to be challenged. Um, I will show modifications for all of them and all of the things that I'll be doing is relatively safe unless you have an acute injury. Um, so most of these exercises are classic mat Pilates exercises. The entire sequencing is about 20 minutes. I do include some breath exercises uh, before in the warm up and also at the end so that you're nice and relaxed. Pilates is a body mind connection, so breath work is important to uh, induce that parasympathetic response, which is the relaxation response in the body in addition to working all the muscles and working on posture alignment and core strength. So without further ado, let's begin laying supine. <clears throat> so let's do a body check, making sure that the spine is neutral. Imagine that there is a grape underneath the lumbar region, underneath that lower back. Place your hand there. Imagine that grape is there. You don't want to crush it, but you also want to kind of touch your hand. So never crush the grape because then you're rounding the back. You don't want to arch the back. That's called lordosis. So you really want that neutral spine. So if you play with that spinal movement a little bit, and once you find that neutral spine, you'll see that the lumbar region is kind of hugging your hand, the top of your hand, but not crushing it. Remove your hand, and that's neutral spine. The next thing to do in the body check before we begin any Pilates exercise is to engage the pelvic floor. So what does that mean? It starts from the pubic bone, pulling up and in, and then zipping it all the way up to the navel. So with the navel, you want to bring it back posteriorly towards the spine, but not compromising that neutral spine. Engaging all of the abdominal muscles, rectus abdominis, and all of the deeper muscles beneath rectus abdominis. So now you should feel everything you're engaged. Shoulders away from the ears, lengthen the neck, keep that neutral neck spine as well. You don't want to bring the head back or tuck the chin in. So once you have that neutral spine all the way up the neck, shoulders away from the ears, place the hands on the mat next to your hips. Go ahead and close your eyes. We're going to start the thoracic breathing. It begins as you inhale, you flare out the rib cage, all the intercostal muscles expand and you bring that inhalation all the way up to the clavicle as the diaphragm drops on the inhalation. So here we go. Deep inhale. And then slowly exhale through the mouth. The whole time keeping the core engaged. Two more. Starting the warm up sequence, we're going to inhale to prepare, keeping that neutral spine. Exhale, execute by bringing the arms overhead, keeping the shoulders away from the ears. Good. Inhale, returning back down with the hands to the side of the body, next to the hips. Inhale to prepare. Exhale. Keep that neutral spine. Exhale. Turn the hands back to the side of the body. The next exercise, we're going to alternate our hands. So go ahead and take one hand over the head. Inhale to prepare. Exhale, switch. Inhale to prepare. Exhale, switch. Inhale to prepare. Exhale, switch. You can also circle your hands, so inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, and go in the opposite direction so you get the picture. Just moving those shoulders, getting them prepared for all the planks that we're going to do later. 
All right, getting the spine awakened, we're going to bring the arms out. Inhale to prepare, bring right knee up to tabletop. Inhale to prepare. Exhale, bring the left knee up to tabletop. Keep the knees aligned with the hips and parallel to each other. Inhale to prepare. Exhale, draw the knees over to the left. This works the obliques. Inhale to prepare. Exhale, draw the knees over to the right. This is contraindicated if you have acute back pain, especially if you have herniated discs. So be careful with this one. If your back is fine, this is actually good for chronic lower back pain. If there's any kind of muscle tension in the lower back, if you have a desk job, this is a good one to do. Inhale to prep. Exhale, turn to the left. Inhale to prep. Exhale, turn to the right. And you can do hip circles and all that, but I'm just going to show you the twists. All right, come back to supine position. Body check. Align the spine and take three deep breaths. One more deep breath. Next exercise, we're going to bring the knees up to tabletop again. So inhale to prep, bring the right knee up. As you exhale, inhale to prep. Bring the left knee up, tabletop. You can point or flex the toes, whatever feels comfortable for you. And what we're going to do is toe tap. This engages the abs, so make sure again that you don't crush the grape if you have a neutral spine. Feather, pelvic floor in and up, navel to the spine, shoulders away from the ears. We're going to start by toe tapping both toes, both feet, all of the toes down. As we exhale, we bring the arms overhead. So inhale to prepare, exhale, toe tap, bring the arms overhead, keep the shoulders away from the ears. Surprisingly, this really engages the abs, so even doing five reps can be a challenge. So inhale to prepare, exhale, inhale to prepare, exhale, one more time, inhale to prepare. Exhale. Now I'm going to show you modification, makes it a little bit more challenging. So we're going to do the same thing. I usually like to transition side to side before we do anything else, just to get the body uh, stretched out after each core exercise. So you can do, this is called the windshield wiper. So bring the feet, I added this in just to uh, stretch it all out after you do core work. So it stretches the obliques. And it's just overall is a good transition between uh, Pilates sequencing. Um, it's a sequence move that will allow you to transition into the next core exercise. So the way it works is inhale, knees up. Exhale, draw the knees over to the right. Inhale, knees up. Exhale, draw the knees to the left. Good. Returning. We're going to do the same thing now, but we're going to uh, lift the chest and the head up. Try not to crush the neck. You never want to crunch the neck like this because that can hurt the cervical vertebrae. So inhale to prepare. Bring one knee up. Inhale. Exhale, bring the other knee up. All right, bring the hands here. Inhale to prepare. Exhale, lift up. You're going to look between the thighs. And this exercise is the same as before, but it's a little bit more engaging. It definitely works the abs a lot more. So inhale to prepare. Exhale, left toe tap, right hand over the head behind the ears. Inhale to prepare. Exhale, right toe tap, and left hand over the head behind the ears. Keep going. Let's do three more. One more time, both sides. Good, and relax. And again, you can do the sequencing of doing the windshield wipers, or you can do a butterfly to relax, or you could just lay down, recuperate by taking three deep thoracic breaths. Don't forget, always keep the abs engaged, core engaged. Try not to crush the grapes. Remember the grape there. Don't 
crush it, but make sure you touch it so your neutral spine shoulders away from the ears. Close your eyes and take three deep breaths. Out through the mouth. or point the toe, whatever you feel is good for you today. Inhale to prep. Exhale, bring the left foot up. I like to flex when your feet tend to get cramped up or maybe your calves get cramped up, so then you probably should be flexing because you're going to stretch it out. All right, so inhale to prep. Exhale, come up. Engage. Zip up the abs, shoulders away from the ears. All right, we're going to toe tap with alternating hand and foot. So inhale. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Notice my arms are behind, my right arm is behind the left right ear, and my left arm is behind the left ear. As I tap the left toe, my right hand goes up. As I tap my right toe, my left hand goes up. A lot of people tend to do this, crunch their neck, so make sure your neck is extended. Another modification, a lot of people have neck issues. You can always use a block, and it, it probably won't engage the abs as much, but it's definitely safer for people with neck trouble. So those are a few of the modifications. Um, sometimes I like to come up and just take a couple of deep breaths. One more deep breath. exercise incorporate um, my uh, yoga training since I do a lot of breathing but it definitely is great for individuals that need a little break and can't keep going in between without any breaks all right so the next thing we're going to do is move into our Pilates exercises so I'm going to show you a way to transition back down inhale to breath exhale slowly come down And if that's too hard, another way to do it, I'm going to show you, is you can uh, bend the knees. And you're going to inhale to prep. Exhale. All right. And then the last and easiest way to come down transitioning is we can do uh, a few little warm-ups here before we actually come down. So you're going to inhale, exhale, scoop, tuck, and hollow, chin to the chest. Inhale, open the chest, exhale, navel to the spine, scoop, and hollow, chin to the chest. Two more. Exhale. One more. And then slowly come down. All right. The next exercise is one leg circles. So I'm going to show the advanced first and then modifications. This exercise for a lot of people doesn't seem like it is doing much, but it is amazing work because you're still engaging the core, you're working the glutes and the thighs. It's definitely a great hip exercise. Again, make sure you do a body check and place the hands underneath the lumbar region. And you can gently press the lumbar region against the tops of your hands, but don't crush that imaginary grade. Neutral spine, shoulders away from the ears. So we're going to start by bringing the right leg up, slightly turn the leg out. Now, there's a little bit of uh, differences in practices. You could Keep the leg neutral or slightly turned out. Originally, Joseph Pilates did everything neutral. All right, now we're going to do this hip circle. And it really is a hip circle, although we call it a leg circle because we're moving our hip. 
So take a deep inhale to prepare. Exhale, slowly come around. Now figure out which way you want to go. You can go this way or you can go that way first. So it really doesn't matter. Just take a deep inhale. Exhale. And return back to neutral. You can flex the toe or you can point the toe, whatever feels good for you. opposite direction. I'm going to demonstrate with the toe pointed. And return the leg down. Let's do the other side. And notice this is my surgical side. Recently had a total hip replacement. My hamstring is a lot tighter. So for people with tight hamstrings, this is the modification, slightly bent knee. Again, you can point or flex the toe, whatever feels comfortable for you. Don't forget, don't compromise that neutral spine, and try not to flare out the hips. The hips stay grounded the whole time. Imagine that your sacrum is like literally cemented to your yoga mat. All right, slightly bend your knee if you need to if your hamstring is tight. Shoulders away from the ears, don't forget the spinal alignment. Don't forget to zip up the abs. Here we go. Inhale to prep. Exhale. Inhale to prep. Exhale. Inhale to prep. Exhale. Usually three to five is good. Let's do the opposite direction. Inhale to prep. Exhale. Inhale to prep. Exhale. Inhale to prep. Exhale, and relax, good. You shake the legs out if you want. You can tuck the knees into the chest, rock it out. Um, you can do a roll up and just massage that spine. And just return to your supine position. Take three thoracic breaths in through nose, out through the mouth. Now we're going to move into the next exercise. Inhale to prep. Exhale, bend the right knee. You can flex or point the toe. Inhale to prep. Exhale, bend the left knee. We're in tabletop. Taking the hands behind the head. We're going to move up, but not before zipping the abs, keeping the neutral spine. Inhale to prepare. Exhale, lift up. Good. Now inhale to prepare. Exhale, you're slowly going to wing that left elbow to the left side. Try not to bring the elbows close to each other. Keep them apart like elephant ears. Inhale to prep back to neutral. Exhale, right elbow down. Usually three to five is good for beginners. Inhale, exhale. Don't forget to zip up the abs. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Lost count, so I'm going to do one more on both sides. And relax. You can come into a butterfly, rock it out. You can stretch out the legs, interlace your hands, stretch the arms, stretching out the abs. You can do the roll, back it up, just massaging that spine. You can massage the spine by doing the warm-up that we did earlier. Inhale and exhale, scoop and hollow. Just these are all transitional uh, movements that you can do before each every each and every main exercise that we do. So the next one, inhale to prepare. Exhale, scoop and hollow. The next exercise is going to be the 100 or the hundred, I should say. So let's get back onto the supine position. Again, I like to challenge my abdominal muscles. So take a deep inhale. Exhale. 
Exhale, slowly come down. And this is the advanced method, but you can slowly come down with the knees bent and all modifications I showed you earlier. <clears throat> the hundred is quite challenging for many people. And I have discovered with a lot of my beginners, as well as people uh, with special populations, uh, I would say more than 50% of the population that comes into my studio has issues, uh, cervical disc bulges, issues with their neck, uh, lumbar disc bulges. So I will show a modification uh, by protecting the neck when we do this uh, 100. So let me demonstrate how to do it. So take a deep inhale. Exhale, bring the right knee up to tabletop. You can flex or point the toe, whatever feels comfortable. Inhale to prep. Exhale, bring the left knee up. All right, inhale to prep. Don't forget to zip up the abs. And exhale, slowly come up. So now your hands, notice my palms are facing the floor, shoulders away from the ears, abs are zipped. All right, this is where people have trouble holding their neck up. Modification, you can actually put a block here. So it won't engage the abs as much, but it is definitely safer for their neck. I'm not going to use the block, so here we go. Uh, to do the, the 100, you're going to inhale for five pumps like this. So they're tiny movements, but they're pretty strong movements. You want to engage everything, including the hands, and exhale for five movements. All right? Inhale for five, exhale for five. So here we go. Inhale, two, three, four, five, exhale. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five, exhale, one, two, three, four, five. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five, exhale, one, two, three. Four, five. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five. Exhale, one, two, three, four, five. I've only done five, just to demonstrate. You can come into a butterfly, or again, stretch it out. The abs definitely worked hard. So show your clients various um, transitional poses like this, so that they don't feel overwhelmed between each and every single Pilates exercise. All right, you can even massage your abdomen, you can place your hands on the abdomen. Don't forget to keep that neutral spine. And as you recuperate between poses um, and between the Pilates exercises, I'm always focusing on the breath work. So all these transitional movements and poses, make sure that you address the breath as well. And in Pilates, we only do that thoracic breath, so keep that Whole core always engaged, pelvic core in and up, navel to the spine, constantly remind them. They forget and they tend to just kind of loosen up and forget also how to breathe properly when they're doing the Pilates exercises. A lot of beginners forget the thoracic breath and don't really breathe through that rib cage and expand and up in through nose, out through mouth. You constantly have to direct them. And always have them massage their spine because. It always feels good to do that if you're laying on your back for an extended period of time. All right, now the next uh, core exercise, um, core flexion exercise, is the uh, double leg stretch. So uh, this one is quite challenging. I wouldn't call it beginner, definitely intermediate advanced, so uh, as well as the uh, 100. So uh, the way to do it is you're going to inhale to prep, bring the uh, right knee up to 90 degrees, tabletop, you can flex or point the toe, inhale to prep, exhale, bring the other leg up, good. Inhale to prep, zip up the abs, exhale, come up, and what we're going to do is as you extend, the double leg stretch is you're going to extend the legs out, bring the arms behind the ears, overhead, and then return to the original position like this. Okay, try not to crush the neck. I would say look up towards the ceiling, but not with the head back. All right, so here we go. Inhale, exhale. Now, advanced is lower legs, okay? Beginner, if it's too much for them, if they bring their legs up higher, it's actually definitely easier. So I'm gonna do both ways. Here we go, inhale, exhale. This is the easier version. Inhale, exhale. 
Now I got used to bringing the legs straight out. Inhale to prep. Exhale. Inhale to prep. Exhale. Inhale to prep. Exhale. And relax. Back to supine position. Stretch the arms overhead. All right. Now you can roll up if you want. That would be one way to do it. Or you can um, roll back down and lay down for a transition laying down. But the next thing that we're going to do is open leg rocker. So some people like to start from supine position, otherwise you can roll up. So the open leg rocker is, for me, is one of my favorites. Um, I like to start laying down, but I'm going to show it laying up because that's how most people do it. So um, you can bring the legs up like this. You can take the hands behind the knees or legs, wherever it feels comfortable. Make sure that you tell your people not to round your back, making sure that their spine is completely straight, abs are engaged, navel to the spine, pelvic floor up. Okay, so this is where we start. If their hamstrings are tight, they can start with their knees bent. Okay, otherwise, the original movement, the original exercise, the open leg rocker is with the legs straight. Flex or point the toes, whatever feels good. All right, so inhale to prepare, exhale, inhale up, exhale, inhale up, exhale, inhale up, exhale, inhale up, exhale. Up. Exhale. And you can do it without the hands if you're really strong. This is a lot harder. So you're gonna hold the legs up, inhale, exhale, inhale. Exhale. So those are some of the options for open leg rocker. The easiest version, obviously, is holding the um, hands behind the knees. Knees are bent. Inhale to prepare. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. And from here, we're going to move right into the next um, exercise. The next Pilates exercise is the saw. Have your feet mat distance apart, just beyond the mat. So it's not a big straddle or anything like that. It's an extended wide angle pose that is where the heels are at the edge of your yoga mat. All right, we're gonna start with the saw. Pelvis, pelvic floor in and up. Abs engaged, navel to the spine, neutral spine, not arched, not rounded, so neutral spine. Don't forget that deep, Breathing, thoracic breath while the abs are zipped up. So zip it up from the pelvis all the way up to the solar plexus. Now, how to do the saw. We're going to keep that neck neutral. Bring the arms out like you're a scarecrow. You can bring the palms up or palms down. I like to keep the palms down. It is almost uh, like you have wings. And as you know, wings are slightly bent, right? So they're not completely straight. You never really want to encourage overstretching. See, I have double joint, I'm very ligamentous laxity is what I have. So with people like me, we definitely can overstretch and um, not a good thing for joint movement. Um, it causes instability eventually. So have them bend the elbows slightly. All right, so if you're doing this with me, Take a deep inhale. As you exhale, scoop and hollow and twist, looking over that left shoulder, bring that right hand all the way over. Inhale to prep, come back to neutral spine. Exhale, scoop and hollow, navel to the spine. Good, inhale to prep. Exhale, scoop and hollow. So this works the obliques. It's not just a very um, intense stretch for people that have tight hamstrings, but it also works the abs and the obliques. So it doesn't look like much, but it is quite challenging. Exhale. And when you get more advanced, you can do other varieties, but this is pretty much it. What I would say is if they have tight hamstrings, if you happen to be a client with tight hamstrings, you can modify like this. Keeping the knees bent. Exhale. Inhale, exhale, 
All right. So those are the uh, modifications um, for this saw. All right. So we're going to slowly move now into our side leg series. So move over to the left side. Actually, I'm going to move over to the right side because my hip replacement side is not very comfortable. All right. So we're going to do side leg series. So make sure that you're aligning your elbow with your shoulder. Make sure your abs are zipped from the pelvic floor all the way up to the solar plexus. Make sure you have neutral spine. Make sure you have one long line. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna lift this leg up slowly as if you're uh, creating a line coming up to that wall. As you exhale, erase the line, okay? So making sure you don't crunch your neck, shoulders away from the ears. Inhale to prepare, slowly coming up, creating a line on the wall, exhale, erase the line, and really extend through that leg all the way out through the heel, so really engage all the thigh muscles, engage the abs. All right, so let's do five of these. Here we go. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Zip up the abs, inhale. Exhale, two more, inhale, exhale, one more, exhale. Now I'm going to cross this leg over like this, and for people like me, this could be a little bit challenging, so you don't want to bring it all the way there. So wherever you feel comfortable, where you don't feel like you're um, overstretching the hip, all right, make sure that your abs are zipped, and we're going to lift up, lift. Now, you can, I definitely encourage that when you do this, make sure you don't crush the neck. This happens a lot. Make, always do a body check before you start. So line up your shoulder with your elbow, and as you uh, come up, again, extend out through the heel. I like to keep that bottom leg foot flexed. So inhale. Exhale, so it's not a lot of movement, but this works the adductor muscles, adductor magnus, um, pectineus, which is really, really a deep, deep adductor muscle, um, the longus, so there's quite a few adductors there. All right, so usually five of these um, are beneficial. All right, so I cannot um, demonstrate on the other side since uh, I'm still trying to heal my hip from the replacement. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is uh, move on to uh, plank. So once you complete this side, we literally transition right into plank, okay? So plank pose, um, you want to make sure your feet are hip distance apart and your wrists are shoulder width apart. Zip up the abs, okay? And you can just start out with beginners holding plank. Now, um, today I'm going to demonstrate a very typical exercise that we do beyond Pilates, which is a push-up. Um, so for many people, this is quite challenging. So I'll demonstrate the various uh, ways to modify the push-ups. Uh, what else do I want to say? With um, people that have wrist problems, you can do the plank on the elbow. All right, so without further ado, let's move into plank. So we're going to move into plank, have the feet hip distance apart, have the wrist shoulder width apart, and before we do any push-ups, we're going to take a deep inhale, exhale, drop the knees down, inhale, exhale, drop the knees down. So this is a good warm-up before we do all that. So hopefully you like doing this because it is definitely working not just the abs, but also the quads, all right? And typically three to five uh, repetitions is good. After each exercise, uh, especially when we're in plank pose, I like to uh, put you back into child's pose. So go ahead and rest in child's pose. Take five deep breaths. The thoracic breaths is perfect. All right, so 
So now we're going to do the push-ups. So with the push-ups, the beginner version, you can cross your legs or keep the knees up. I don't like to cross my legs because of my hip replacement. So that's one way that you can do it. Keeping the knees bent, feet flexed like this. Now I like to keep a neutral spine. I tell people not to bring the elbows out like chicken uh, wings. You don't want them to flare out like this. You want them to really actually even work the triceps. So there's various ways to do it this way or this way. So I like to actually work the deltoids, um, the biceps, and the triceps. And when you're doing this, you're, you're at a better biomechanical angle versus this way. And people tend to get injuries in the rotator cuff when you're not ready for it. And they kind of collapse into it, and that really hurts um, the tendons from the biceps and the deltoid. All right, so without further ado, let's do the push-ups. Bring the knees up. Okay, engage the abs. Feet are parallel to each other. And we're slowly going to come down like this. Inhale up. Exhale. Inhale up. Exhale. Good. Now, if you want to make it a little bit harder, we can come up like this. Inhale to prepare. Exhale. Okay, so it's definitely a lot harder. And there are people that can do this, so um, you know you can ask people to start off with the beginner level, and then if they find that too easy, they can move on to the more advanced level. Okay, so when you do the push-ups, usually what I like to do is transition right into your child's pose. Once you're finished, rest here. Thoracic breaths, five deep breaths. Heroes pose. Before transitioning to more um, planks, you want to try to uh, help people out by stretching after they contract it. So maybe perhaps a transitional pose here uh, before moving on to our next exercise, which will be um, single leg shoulder bridge. So really stretch this out, feel the stretch. more. One more. And then you could also take this left elbow up and stretch out your triceps. other things that you could do in plank. So I'm going to demonstrate that. So before we go into that uh, single leg shoulder bridge, I just want to demonstrate plank. Um, for people who have plantar fasciitis, this is actually a very good exercise. And I should take my socks off. Um, this will probably ruin the video. <laughs> but um, you want to do this without socks. So coming in to plank pose. As you inhale, so you're going to lift this leg up and you're going to bring the heel back and return. Inhale, leg up and bring the leg back and return. Inhale, bring that heel all the way back and return. Now always remember, keep that neutral spine, navel to the spine, engage the abs. Inhale. Exhale, roll that right heel back. Try to keep your hips parallel to each other. We tend to bring the hips up and pipe into a downward dog. So keep yourself in plank. Inhale to prep. Exhale to roll that left heel back. This is wonderful for plantar fasciitis. Inhale to prep. Exhale to roll that right heel back. Good. And return to child's pose. 
Three deep breaths here. And roll it up to hero's pose. Now, if you want to do hero's pose, um, stretching the quads, I typically like to put the block, as you can see, it is longitudinally right underneath my hips. And transitioning before moving into other uh, exercises and Pilates, you can uh, bring the hands back and stretch the quads because we did do quite a few exercises today to engage all of that. And if you want, you can lift the hips up and stretch the abs. Good, and return. So those are, again, transitional movements that you can do before we move on to the next Pilates exercise. All right, so a little body check here before we move to our last exercise, number 10, single leg shoulder bridge. So check the body, neutral spine, navel to the spine, engage the abs, thoracic breath. Three deep breaths. And slowly roll the right hip around, bring the legs around. Transitioning down, again, you can uh, work the abdominal muscles. If your clients are tired, they can just take the hands uh, behind the knees and slowly roll down. So here we go, take a deep inhale. Exhale. All right, so the last exercise for today is a uh, shoulder bridge. And the shoulder bridge, um, I'll show the classic shoulder bridge, but for today, um, this sequencing, I wanna do a single leg shoulder bridge. But nonetheless, I wanna demonstrate both because the original, before we move into single leg shoulder bridge, you need to be able to acquire and master the ability to do a shoulder bridge properly. All right, so as you inhale, Remember, zip up the abs, neutral spine and all that, and slowly, starting from your tailbone, work your pelvis up, and then one vertebra at a time, like a pearl on a string, lift yourself up. And then slowly, like a pearl on a string, one vertebra at a time, from the thoracic, to the lumbar, to the sacrum, until your tailbone is on the mat. For beginners, I recommend that they use a block between their knees to make sure that the alignment is proper and that the knees are parallel to each other. Typically, I like to place it like this. This might be too wide and uncomfortable for people. So place it longitudinally like so. All right, so here we go. We're gonna do about three of these. So inhale, lift up, and slowly peel it down. So that's inhale lift up. So you can also do two methods, inhale lift up or inhale to prep. Exhale, slowly peel up. Inhale, slowly come down. Exhale, slowly come up. So I've seen the breath work done both ways. Um, it's your preference, really doesn't matter that much, except when you're doing flexion, you definitely want to exhale, execute, and inhale to prep. So in this one, you can inhale, come up, exhale, come down, because we're stretching, um, or inhale to prep, and exhale, execute, lift the hips up. So here we go. But before you remind yourself, it's not just about the hips, it's rolling it up, so you're stretching from the sacrum all the way up to the thoracic vertebrae and then slowly coming down, all right? So that is shoulder bridge. I'll do one more time. Inhale to prep. Exhale, peel up the coccyx bone and then the sacrum and then the lumbar and then the thoracic all the way up and then the thoracic and then slowly coming down to the lumbar, scoop and hollow and then slowly neutral spine as you bring the sacrum and tailbone to the coccyx bone now. All right, so that is shoulder bridge. Now I'll demonstrate, I'm gonna demonstrate it on this side because my left hip is acting up today. Um, you don't want to bring that left knee 
lower than the right knee. So you want to line up the left knee with the right knee, flex or point the toe, making sure your foot is really close to the hip so you have more leverage coming up. And you're going to really push into the ground, push that um, right foot deep into the ground as you lift up. All right, neutral spine, engage the out, shoulders away from the ears, inhale to prep. Exhale, lift the hips up, and then slowly peel your way down, back onto that tailbone or coccyx. All right, so five of these, inhale to prep. Exhale, and slowly come down. Inhale, exhale, slowly come down. Inhale, exhale. One more time, inhale, exhale. All right, so that's it. That's it for my back too, <laughs> my back and hips. So rock and roll, you can do this if you want at the end of your exercise, stretching out the lower back and hips. And after these 10 exercises, I always like to complete the whole routine by doing a body check reminding clients how important it is to have that neutral spine, making sure that the um, palm is underneath that lower back but not crushing it. So always have the clients feel that lumbar region, placing that right hand on the right, um, on the abdomen and finding that neutral spine. Also, making sure the shoulders are away from the ears, lengthen the neck, Pelvic floor in and up, abs engaged, closing the eyes. We end our practice with five thoracic breaths, connecting the body and the mind and the breath with the movement. Stretch the arms overhead. And that is your complete 10 exercise sequence in a beginner Pilates. Oh, thank God. I just finished recording.